So what's in a minimalist living room? Or more importantly, what's not in it? <laughs> Let's talk about that today. Well, hi, I'm Dawn from The Minimal Mom. We love sharing tips and tricks about how you can simplify your house quickly. And so we've lived as a minimalist for about six years now. And today I want to break down our minimalist living room and just show you what's in it and what things have we gotten rid of from it. And before we get started, I think it's important to recognize that when I say minimalist, I no longer equate that with a certain number of items or a checklist that other people have told me should be or shouldn't be in a living room. For me, the term minimalist has become very personal and it's synonymous with a room feeling peaceful, for it feeling welcoming. I still want it to feel cozy, but also I want it to be easy to keep clean and for my family to be able to pick it up and keep it clean too. And so for us, this term minimalism, it just really means how does our house feel now and it's been awesome and we couldn't imagine living any other way so let's talk about our minimalist living room and break it down into the different elements that we would find in this kind of room and so first things first let's talk about the furniture in the room and does it support the function of the room and also does it help the room to feel open and spacious or does it make it feel more closed in and kind of cluttered? And so I think it'd be helpful to actually list out the furniture in the room and decide, is it essential? So for us, the function of this room, it's a place where we sit and visit and also a place where the kids play. And so to support those purposes, of course, we need a couch, the coffee table is very essential, and then also the two armchairs offer more seating. And so I would consider those the essential pieces of furniture in this room. Then we have kind of the secondary furniture. So we have a side table between the two chairs and an end table at the end of the sofa. And we could get by without those, but they're nice to have a place to set a cup of coffee when you're visiting or set your book down. But beyond that, sometimes extra pieces of furniture find their way into our space and they don't necessarily support the function of the room. Either we got them because I don't know, we'd like them. They were given to us, we found a good deal on it. And so Tom and I sell real estate, so we go through a lot of different houses. And I would say one of the things we come across most often is that there's simply just too much furniture in a room. And again, it depends what your goals are for it. I'm not trying to say this is the only way or the right way to make a minimalist living room. But for us, we found that we often need to take out more than we would expect to make a space feel open and spacious and to really have it be easy to pick up. And so it's helpful again if we're making this list of the furniture in our room. The other thing that we can kind of be aware of is are these pieces of furniture as we're listing them out, are any of them clutter collectors? Is it a place where stuff just naturally gets set on it or put on it or stored on it and then it causes extra work for us? And so sometimes things like bookcases, hutches, uh, china cabinets, uh, sofa tables, extra pieces of furniture like that can actually attract more clutter and more stuff that then we have to take care of. And so I was really aware when we were picking out the pieces of furniture for this room that I didn't actually want like any cabinets or any pieces of furniture where we could just shove stuff, right? It's like out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> and so for this room, we didn't really have a lot to store. And so I wanted the pieces to be very simple so that they couldn't collect a lot of stuff. And another thing that we notice often too is sometimes the furniture is just too big for the space. I think it's important that our furniture is comfortable and we enjoy using it. It's it, The function is just as important as the aesthetic of it, right? But sometimes it's just too big for the space. And so Tom and I, when we moved into our townhouse, he found this great overstuffed leather set on Craigslist and it had the full sofa and the love seat and an ottoman and a big chair, huge chair. <laughs> and so we put them in our upstairs living room and they were functionally, they were very comfortable, but they really overpowered the space and it, it lined all of the walls of the room and it was like, bumped up to each other <laughs> furniture around the whole room and so it was comfortable but it was just a little bit too much for that space and so what we ended up doing was just taking the love seat out and just keeping the chair and the sofa it still offered plenty of seating space enough that we needed at the time but it helped the space then to feel more open and more spacious so it's okay if sometimes we need to break up a set of furniture or take out some extra pieces that we don't actually need sometimes we put all this in because we got the full set right so then you put it all in <laughs> but sometimes we have to step back and say okay but do we really need 
all of the pieces in here or would the room feel a lot better without some of them? Which leads us to the second category of things. Are there things that we're storing in this room? Now, sometimes we need to store things out of necessity, but have we questioned those things lately? Do we have lots and lots of DVDs that nobody's watching? Do we have stacks of magazines or newspapers that nobody is reading? What other things have found their way into that room? Maybe we store toys in there for our kids, but I would really encourage you that one small basket of toys is probably enough and then maybe you rotate them or you keep the bulk of them somewhere else if possible. I know it's not always possible, but I'm talking ideal, like best case scenario here is we just have a small basket of toys for our kids or for our pets or whoever it is that's using them. Okay, so what about the decorations, the fun stuff in the room? Similar to when we go to other houses and we see too much furniture or too big of furniture in a room, we also often see too much stuff on the walls. You know how you, when you're reading a book, there's the margins? Well, rooms are the same in that we need open space on walls for our brain to have resting spots. If when we're looking at a room, there is stuff on all of the walls all the way around, it's actually a little bit stressful to our brain and it's a lot to inventory and for our brain to take in. Now, over time, we become very used to this. And so we might not even realize that we've let stuff accumulate on the walls and it's making the room feel more stressful and less peaceful than it could be. And so it's always a good idea to once in a while reevaluate the stuff that's on the walls. Of course, this happens naturally whenever we go to paint a room. The last time we painted this room, we took everything down and then we didn't put it back up and it felt great and we loved it. <laughs> but then we did just recently add the family pictures back into, which has been fun. And I really like these picture frames and it doesn't feel too much or too heavy for the room. And so decorations accumulate a lot of the same ways furniture does. We like it or it's given to us or it's handed down to us. But when was the last time you actually stopped to reevaluate the stuff that was in your room? The window treatments also fall into this category. We had a friend and we were helping her sell her house and when they moved in, their house came with these fairly elaborate drapes. It had the panels on the sides and then it had like the swag that went over the top and they were nice looking and so my friend just left them up the whole three years that they were living there. But then when it went time to sell, we were kind of like, you know what? What would it look like if we took the top piece down and one of the side panels. And so we took all of that extra stuff down and my friend could not believe how much bigger and brighter the space felt. Again, we know how this goes that it's like, well, it's just always been there. Or we don't question these things. Or that we never say like, oh, why do we have it there? Is it still the best option? So we have these drapes, they're just from Target. We got them, I don't know, three years ago. They still have them there though too. I like that they have the grommets on the top so they're easy to open and close. We don't have any blinds on the windows so we do use the curtains. But again, just taking a second to reevaluate what's on our windows and is it adding to the space? Is it making it feel nice and peaceful and cozy or how we want it to feel? or is it potentially closing in the room and making it not feel as welcoming? And so I do have a printable down below of questions that you can ask yourself when you're reevaluating your living room. Questions like, if I were setting this room up again, would I choose these same pieces? Is my furniture too big for this space? Do we have too much furniture in here? Would it feel better if we got rid of some of these extra pieces of furniture? Would I get rid of some of this stuff if somebody gave me money for it? If I had to buy it again, would I buy the same stuff again? If I simplified it more, would it be easier for my family to help keep this space clean? Would it feel more inviting if I simplified it more? How much stuff do I want to maintain? So we have throw pillows, right? I love throw pillows and I think they're functional and aesthetically I like how they make a space feel, but how many throw pillows am I willing to pick up off the floor and reset every day? We have four. Four feels like a good amount right now. How many pieces of decoration am I willing to dust and to manage? How many magazines do I want to restack and reorganize each day? And so to really think about how much stuff do I want to manage? If you want to manage less stuff in your living room, that's totally okay. I used to have stacks of mag magazines in our living room that I never read and they would actually make me feel guilty when I looked at them. Or how about stacks and stacks of DVDs that nobody's watching because we stream all of our shows now or decorations that I'm keeping pretty much just because I spent money on them. We've all been there and we're really good at bringing stuff in, but most often we don't have a plan for bringing it back out again. So I just want to encourage you to take a few minutes to reevaluate the stuff in your living room. Do you like it? Is it adding value or would your space feel better without it? 
it's okay if there's stuff in there that you don't like anymore. That's totally fine. Like really, it's totally okay. <laughs> so I'd love to know what things in your living room are you questioning now? What pieces do you love, like truly love? And what things maybe did you buy just because it was inexpensive or somebody gave it to you? We all have that stuff too. <laughs> Let us know how you would like to adjust your space down below. And we're gonna keep working our way through the different rooms of the house. So we'd love it if you'd subscribe so you're notified when new videos are released. And did I forget anything? If there's anything I forgot, for sure, let me know that <laughs> down below too. But I hope you're doing really well and we will visit with you again soon.